Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas' Wednesday evening experience. I'm Reverend Laura, and it's my pleasure to be back here again with you. We're born whole. Each one of us comes into this world a complete and perfect being. We're not missing anything. We don't need to add anything to us. We are simply absolutely the expression of the divine. I think this is really evident um, when, we, when we spend time with little children. And we, and we watch how they react. Everything, there's like, there's no um, pretense or, um, or, or um, trying to, to hide who they are. If an infant is hungry, it cries. If it needs changing, it cries. If it's filled with joy, you get the smiles on its face. When it's just sitting there observing the world, you can see that contemplative look on its face. Infants are totally in the present moment with everything that's going on. Their in, inner expression of who they are is exactly the same as the outer expression of who they are. There's, there's no hiding what, they, um, what they're bringing to, the, to each experience. And as children um, grow and develop, you can see this continue, the spontaneous joy that happens in a, in a toddler when they just, you know, get the giggles and the laughter and, the, and just like you show them something that, it, you know, a balloon or a piece of candy or to a new toy or a puppy, you know, they're, they're like so overwhelmed with joy and, and every bit of that joy that they're feeling inside is absolutely present on the outside of their, of their being. You can see it on their face. You can see it in their body movements. Everything is totally aligned. Same thing is when a toddler is upset. We've all seen a, an, a two or three year old having a, fa a tantrum because they are so upset. They have just everything about what's going on inside of them feels so wrong with them at that moment that then it does nothing but express itself outwardly in exactly what they're feeling internally. But as we grow up, as we develop, we begin to learn that it's really not safe all the time to express ourselves totally 100% what's happening inside with the outside. Now, generally that happens uh, with the, the things that are um, not so much the joy filled things, but more with the things that are problematic in our lives. And we begin to keep that inside and try to put on a, a happy face so that people don't see it because we've learned, you know, through things that, that society tells children, you know, keep a, you know, uh, don't cry, you know, or, um, you know, be a good girl or a good boy or, you know, have, you know, have, um, you know, be respectful on all the things that we need to do in a way that doesn't explain what their, what the real meaning is of that, but it's more of a way to stop some behavior that the child is exhibiting in that moment. They're told to do different things or to be something different than what they are because for whatever reason, whatever expression they're showing at that moment, the adult's not happy with it. And so children learn very quickly where it's safe to be themselves and where it isn't safe to be themselves. And, you know, as we go through school, it's the same thing. You know, we've got these standardized education where, um, you know, you get a classroom of 30 or 35 kids and um, everybody's expected to behave in a certain way, but not everybody's feeling the same way at the same time. But, but they learn to, that they have to conform to that and hide who they're feeling, what they're feeling inside because it isn't safe to express it outwardly. It isn't safe to be different. You know, this happens with kids that um, are, are challenged in their learning. They're, they learn very quickly that the school is not a safe place for them. It happens with kids that are maybe um, are um, wondering about their gender identity, their, their uh, sexuality and so forth. That becomes very unsafe for children to be around. I mean, Fortunately, the world is changing rapidly, and I just I'm delighted to see how that is uh, shifting and how that's going to affect the children as they're as they are maturing now in the, our society, where things are a little more acceptable. Well, depending on 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 their family and the people that are around them, but but we learn very quickly where we can be our real self and where we have to hide who we are, and all of this leads to this feeling of a divided life. Who I am inside doesn't match how I'm showing up outside, my outward expression. And um, that can lead to a lot of pain. It, it, that feeling that we are not safe to be who we feel like we are is a very painful experience for people. And, it, and it, 
can lead to so many of the problems that we see showing up in our world. I think pretty much every kind of addiction comes from that idea of I'm not safe within myself. I need to find something to make me feel better about who I am because what I feel inside of me is not safe or, or not acceptable for me to express who I am. And, uh, you know, so much of the violence that we see in the world is done because of this. Um, it's either done to people who are expressing differently or it's done by people who have been so shut down in their lives that it finally just burst out as violence. And, and, um, and so much of the aggression that we see in our world today, I believe, stems from this feeling of this, this paradox of who I feel like I am inside with how I'm forced to show up in the world outside. You know, I've been on a journey of, um, of finding my authentic life. And, you know, as I've developed as a speaker over the years, the one thing that um, people comment more and more to me, you know, they'll, they'll come up to me after, after I've given a talk and just be overwhelmed by the, by the authenticity that I show up with and by the willingness to be vulnerable. Because to show up as a real person takes a lot of courage. To show up as you feel like you are inside is a, is a monumental, courageous step to actually begin to do that and to face the rejection of society, face the rejection of your friends, your family, your coworkers, the people around you, people you don't even know. To feel that rejection is, is painful. And so we, we do pretty much anything we can to stop that. But I know from my own experience that when we step out of that, when we allow ourselves to actually express authentically so that our outer expression aligns with who we feel like we are inside, that is true freedom. That is a true sense of, of coming into my own, coming into a, a way of being that um, I like to describe as um, unapologetic confidence. It's like, this is who I am and I'm not ashamed of it and I'm not here to uh, apologize to anybody for anything about myself anymore. I've, I've done that too many years in my life and I don't want to do it anymore and I absolutely refuse to. So, you know, now I now I, I do everything with a sense of confidence that I did not have before um, as far as expressing who I feel like I am inside. And so I think that there's a, a great deal of freedom that can be gained in all of our lives if we take the time to well, one, figure out who we really are inside. You know, for me, it was a kind of a, a process of, of unfolding. You know, um, here at Centers for Spiritual Living, we like to talk about peeling the onion. And you're peeling away each layer till you can actually get to that core. Because all of these things, all these layers of the onion, have been built up over the years to keep us feeling safe, to keep us from from risking the ire of society and uh, risking rejection and and actually risking outright violence against us. And so as we peel that onion away and we get to that that core of it, that true center of who we really are, there's there's a liberation there that is unbelievable. This, this uh, sense of walking and talking in alignment with who I feel like I am inside. And I, and I think that's one of our greatest spiritual journeys is to get to that place where we are actually beginning to feel that. Now, there are hundreds of different practices that can do this, but I, I think starting with um, some meditation and contemplation about who am I? Who am I inside? Who, who is this expression that I show up as here? Who, who is it? And what is what am I hiding from the world? What, and what is it I'm afraid of that's going to happen here? I, and I'm not trying to minimize the fears because some of the fears are very real. You know, many people have, um, you know, even as to the point of losing their lives because they express who they are, um, making their outward expression line up with who they feel like they are inside. And so as we're, as we're working through some of these spiritual practices, try to get a sense of what it is that's really, that you're really called to be, who it is you're really called to be, how it is you're really called to be in the world and see where you're not being that. And then you can take the steps to, to do that. You know, for me, I, um, I do my spiritual practices and I ask questions with the intention of getting an answer whenever I go into any of my spiritual practices. And that I think is, has been 
more profound. Sometimes, you know, we ask these questions that, and, you know, the, the quality of the questions can make a big difference. So if we're asking questions like, why is this happening to me? That's a whole different kind of feeling than what's here for me to know or how, how you know, what is, what is my true expression and how am I to know what that true expression is? It feels a lot different. Um, one of the people I study, Joe Goldsmith says that you can tell the, how well you've progressed spiritually by the quality of questions that you ask yourself. So if you're asking those questions that make you feel like somebody's doing something to you, that's a whole level, different level of consciousness than asking how can I use this information to, um, to affect a change in my life that makes me feel like I'm more in alignment, more congruent with who I am. You know, um, we have fabulous spiritual practitioners in our movement that will help you work through some of the these ideas. If you're not sure, you can you can talk to um, one of our spiritual practitioners or our ministers and see what is what's really happening here. What what is the what are the beliefs that I'm that are operating in my life right now that I may not be aware of? We call those the hidden beliefs, the things that are active in our lives that have been so deeply ingrained that we're not even aware that they're happening in our lives, you know, um, and, and to know the truth for, for you and to help you move through these processes, you know, all of our spiritual work that we do, reading, contemplation, study, meditation, journaling, prayer, all of the things that we do are about personal transformation. They're about getting us to that place where we feel like we've come here to be that whole and perfect being that we actually arrived on this plane of existence as and growing back into that. Because like I said, we've had all these layers of things put upon us over the years that have helped us or helped keep it hidden who we are. So, um, I've been studying the, the work of uh, Parker Palmer and he has a book called The Hidden Wholeness. And, and that's what it is. Our wholeness has been hidden inside of us. It's there all along. You know, um, Michael Beckwith says all, all spiritual growth is about releasing. So it's not about adding anything to ourselves. It's about letting go of the things that we put upon ourselves to hide who we are, to hide our wholeness, to hide our authentic self. And I think this is a, this is a, a monumental journey for each one of us to undertake at our own pace, in our own way, through our own process to be that authentic place where spirit shows up. You know, God loves wondrous diversity. And so each one of us is here to be a unique and perfect expression of the divine, just the way that we show up. You know, um, and as I said, this is, this is world work that uh, will help us get to a place where our society actually begins to shift in consciousness because more people are expressing themselves authentically. So if, you, if you're interested in working with a practitioner, please go to our website, cslglv.org. Look on there. We have a, a list of all of our practitioners. Their phone numbers are listed there, contact information. So reach out to one of our practitioners, and they will be happy to set up an appointment with, appointment with you to have a, a spiritual session with you to uh, see if they can help uncover what's happening in your, in your life for you. Um, and always we have available prayer. Prayer is free. You never have to pay anything for that. And so our website, again, cslglv.org, has a prayer a request page. Go on there, request prayer. And our all of our um, ministry of prayer, our spiritual practitioners and ministers will be happy to hold you in consciousness. Prayer works, folks. It works to change conditions. And so if you're working on, on something in your life right now, reach out. Reach out. I love, I love the phrase... Uh, you know, we take one step towards God and God takes a thousand steps toward, towards us. We've got to ask. We've got to reach out and connect with someone that will help us know the truth. Um, so, you know, check us out on our, our, our YouTube page. We have wonderful meditations and um, there's uh, talks that just the message has been taken out of my uh, the Sunday talk. So you can listen to that in an abbreviated form on Mondays. We have Tuesdays and Saturdays, we have meditations. Fridays, we have our spiritual soundscape, which is some of our phenomenal um, music that's out there. Um, on Thursday mornings, I do an abbreviated uh, spiritual practice called Keeping It Real. Um, so that, that broadcasts at 9 a.m. on Thursday mornings. Of course, you can watch it at any time on um, our YouTube channel. We have a rich 
uh, and diverse amount of material there for you, for your spiritual transformation, for your journey through this thing we call life. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.